So in part one of the identity theory video, we saw that what the theory is, that the mind just is the brain, and we've looked at some pretty good arguments for the theory. Here we'll look at some criticisms. So one problem comes from John Searle. So let's consider his story. John Searle, in his book, The Rediscovery of the Mind, considered a problem with someone having difficulty seeing. So imagine they slowly go blind and they go to the physician and then have a referral to the ophthalmologist and they identify a problem with the optic nerve connecting the eye back to the occipital lobe. And so what they do is they take out the optic nerve and they replace it with an artificial uh, connection there that connects the signals from the eye to the occipital lobe and it works and the person can see again. But then he says, imagine that there's a problem once again and they identify that what's, what's wrong is the connection between the artificial optic nerve and the occipital lobe. So they, they go in and they replace that and you have that connection working again. And imagine this, of course, is repeated. So now you have a, a problem with the occipital lobe. And since that's not working, they go in and replace it. And you have a large processor now. And he says, imagine that this just continues and the parts of your brain are replaced one by one, step by step. You still have the same memories, the same hopes, desires, plans, emotions. You still feel to be the same person, seem to be the same person to everyone else, except now you have no brain. There's no brain tissue. It's all computer components. So at the end of the story, the person has the same mind, but doesn't have a brain at all. And so that's the problem, right? So to put this into an argument, it's possible that we will be able to replace the brain while maintaining the same mind. That's what went on with the person who initially had problems with the optic nerve. But if that's possible, right? If it is possible to replace the brain while maintaining the same mind, well, then the brain cannot possibly be the mind, right? They cannot be the same thing if you end up at the end with the mind, but without the brain. So the brain just simply cannot be the mind. And if that's the case, then we know that the identity theory is incorrect. A second problem with the identity theory, to use an odd word here, the identity theory is chauvinistic. It's not sexist, of course, uh, but it's possible that there are other ways of having a mind besides having an organic human brain. So that's why it's chauvinistic. It's chauvinistic toward that one substance, a human brain. But it seems possible that there are, or at least could be, alien creatures. Maybe they are right now, extraterrestrials who have intelligence, or maybe androids that have a mind but no brain, right? Maybe aliens that have a sophisticated neural network made of silicon, which is nothing like the human brain, but still have a mind. And if that's true, if, there's, if it is possible that you have these beings that have minds but no brain, well, then the mind is not the same thing as the brain. We conclude then when you put them together, if it's possible, mind's not the brain, it is possible, so the mind's not identical to the brain, which of course means that the identity theory is incorrect. Now, there is a third concern that is against physicalism, broadly speaking. So this would be against physicalism in the form of the functionalist theory, as well as uh, the form of the identity theory. And there are some general arguments, some general problems with physicalism. And what we're going to do is consider these concerns, these problems with physicalism as a whole, after we look at our third theory, functionalism. So you'll be able to see that in the video, functionalism part two.